Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. This episode may include topics, references, or discussions around sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, physical violence, or subject matters that may be disturbing to some of our listeners. We do acknowledge that this content may be difficult. We also encourage you to care for your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched, PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. Before we proceed with this episode, our team would like to take this time and show our appreciation to all moms out there. Because of you, we have the vision to reach our dreams and the grit to push through with our obstacles in life. Thank you so much for making us more resilient. Belated Happy Mother's Day. As creators of a true crime podcast, it immensely affects us to learn about heartbreaking incidents involving mothers getting victimized by a violent crime. Unfortunately, our episode for today is not an exemption. It is one of the most disheartening cases that concluded in forgiveness and regret. Make sure to stick around and follow our show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for more true crime cases from the Philippines. And if you are a consistent listener, please leave us a rating on Spotify to help our show reach more people. Mula nung day na yon, and I think I was covering, I was looking for stories na related sa ulan. Then I got a call from the desk saying, puntahan mo itong bahay ni Cherry Pie. May balita kasi na may nangyari sa kanyang nanay, pinatay daw. Pinagtatanong namin yung mga taong nandoon, yung mga pulis, ano ba nangyari? Na, na kwento rin nila sa atin na yung nanay ni Cherry Pie Picache ay nandun sa loob at wala nang buhay. When I moved a little further, nakita ko na yung I saw her head, no? it was uh, protruding from the feet of the, the bed and sabi ko, oh my God, madaming tama, may slash dito, may madaming tama. So I cried in front of her, I said, Mommy, I was like a little boy. Tatlong pot apat na sugat ang natamu po ni Ma'am Senaida, pero dun sa tatlong apat na sugat at natamu niya, meron po siyang uh, apat na talagang sanhi ng agaran niya pong pagkakas. Pumunta kaninang hapon ang aktres na si Cherry Pie Picache kasama ang kanyang kapatid sa Death Investigation Division ng NBI. We decided to request for a parallel investigation from the National Bureau of Investigation in order to utilize and exhaust all resources of the government to resolve this heinous crime. On September 19, 2014, During Typhoon Mario's rampage in the Philippines, a 75-year-old woman was stabbed to death by her house helper after the latter was discovered stealing items inside her home. The victim was Zenaida Season, the mother of actress Cherry Pie Picache, who lived alone at her two-story house on Lasgano Street, Barangay Paligsahan, Quezon City. Her killer's name is Michael Flores. He had been working for six months as a houseboy at Season's residence. Later on, the authorities would find out that the suspect had victimized other families in the past, but not as shocking and heartless compared to what he did 
does deny the season. Zenaida Sison's body was found by Cherry Pai Picache and her driver. They found her in the bedroom with multiple stab wounds and head injuries and a piece of cloth stuffed inside her mouth. Later, the family of the victim reported to authorities that Sison's cell phone and jewelry worth 500,000 pesos were missing, making robbery the motive behind the gruesome killing. Subsequently, Cherry Pai Picache and her brother requested both the Philippine National Police and the National Bureau of Investigation to work together and solve the case. Both public law enforcement agencies agreed to cooperate and were efficient in solving the case right away. After reviewing the CCTV footage outside Zenaida Sison's house on the evening before her death, the NBI saw a man wandering around the vicinity of the crime holding an umbrella, seemingly to hide his face as he passes through his victim's house. The umbrella had a distinct look that was figured to belong to one of the night scavengers in the area. Upon interviewing the umbrella's owner, he told authorities that Michael Flores took it from him, which made Flores the prime suspect in this case. Furthermore, 8 o'clock in the morning, the CCTV footage revealed that a man was walking towards Sison's home. An hour later, another man emerged near the victim's home. Both men seemed to know each other and were seen leaving the area together. The police also analyzed the body language of both persons of interest and claimed that they looked cautious. Authorities also found a bloodstained shirt and shorts that were allegedly owned by one of the suspects. The substantial evidence collected at the crime scene prompted the Quezon City Police Department to go on live television and announce that they were looking for Michael Flores, the prime suspect in the case. Inilabas na ng QCPD ang larawan ng itinuturong suspect. Kinilala siya na si Michael Flores E. Ikoy. 29 anos na taga Camones Island, Cebu. Ito ay gypsy. Walang permanenteng address kung saan-saan lang. Pumupunta lang doon. Pag nalini, nakakalinis, lalabas ulit. Meanwhile, investigators discovered that the suspect knew his way around the house as there were no signs of forced entry. Michael Flores went through the front gate and broke inside the victim's vehicle. He got a screwdriver and used it to open the victim's secret entrance to the residence. According to the authorities, only Zenaida Sison knew about the secret entrance, and someone that worked closely for her might have known about it. The victim suffered 34 stab wounds at the hands of her killer. The suspects stole the victim's cell phone and jewelry worth 500,000 pesos. In the first week of October, the QCPD announced that they are offering a 50,000 peso reward for any information on the whereabouts of Michael Flores. According to QCPD spokesperson, Senior Inspector Maricar Takeban, before Zenaida Sison's robbery slaying, Flores had been subject to complaints about theft from his past employers in Las Piñas City, Cavite, and Laguna provinces. But no formal charges were filed since he allegedly took only small items. On October 8, 2014, three weeks after Sison's brutal killing, Michael Flores was arrested in Barangay Malusac, Santa Rosa, Laguna after a witness anonymously called the police claiming that the suspect was inside his house trying to hide from the authorities. According to the police, Flores shaved, dyed his hair from brown to black, and grew a mustache in hopes of eluding the police. In a statement from Santa Rosa Police Chief Superintendent Pergentino Malabed, the suspect did not resist arrest and admitted to the crime. Zenaida Sison's belongings were also recovered after the swift capture of her killer.
Michael Flores confessed to the killing of Zenaida Season. He told the authorities that he carried out the crime with the help of two companions, but later recanted his testimony and told the reporters that he was the only one who killed the victim. Hindi po inaano na mapapatay ko si Mother Baby, si Son. Pero yung, ang katotohanan po talaga, wala po talaga akong kasama. Ako lang po mag-isa. In his four-page confession, Flores said he was under the influence of illegal drugs when he went to Season's house at 3 o'clock in the morning, last September 19, 2014. The suspect also wrote that he forced his way into the victim's house using a screwdriver that he got from Season's vehicle. Once inside, he took the money and jewelry. However, Season woke up and shouted for help. That is when he decided to kill the victim. He said, quote, Nagsisigaw siya nang nakita niya ako sa loob ng kwarto niya. Doon ko na po siya inatake at napatay dahil nanlaban po siya. Unquote. Based on the confession, Flores said he used a piece of wood from the broken door and a knife from the kitchen to kill his former employer in the past six months, Zenaida Season. Flores claims that he only meant to rob the victim but ended up killing her, which he wholeheartedly regrets. In December 2015, Judge Alfonso Ruiz III of the Quezon City Regional Trial Court convicted Michael Flores. He was found guilty of the crime of robbery with homicide and was sentenced to suffer the penalty of reclusión perpetua or imprisonment of up to 40 years. The court also ordered Flores to pay the Picache family an amount of 1,245,615 pesos for actual damages, 50,000 pesos for moral damages, and another 50,000 pesos for civil indemnity. I'm very happy because, you know, Joseph was served to my mom. I'm sure she's The decision was welcomed by Zenaida Season's family. They immediately went to the cemetery to visit Season and celebrate the legal victory. Nowadays, Michael Flores spends his life in prison doing manicures for his fellow inmates in exchange for money to support his family outside. Five years after the gruesome killing, of Zenaida Season, her daughter, Cherry Pai Picache, said that she had forgiven Michael Flores for the crime he committed. She said in an interview, quote, Of course, it's very difficult for us, the victims, but I think towards our offender, I realized that it's more difficult for him. I realized he was having a difficult time coping, realizing the crime or the evil that he has done towards us, and accepting that he has done it. Now, no longer under the influence of drugs, he's back to his senses. Unquote. Here's a soundbite of the conversation between Cherry Pie Picache and Michael Flores in a documentary called Radical Love, the story of Zenaida Season's death and how it concluded in forgiveness. Sorry. Napatawa niya na talaga ako, madam. Diyos! 
Kasi ako din po eh, hindi ko rin po alam nung ano, hindi ko po talaga kaya humarap sa inyo. Pinausap lang din po ako ng mga kosa ko, baka ito na po yung chance, baka sakali magpatawad nyo ako. Kaya sabi ko nga po kaya na binibiro ko pa po yung kausap ko na kung baka sampalin ako. O kaya baka tadyakan ako, ano kaya tanggapin ko na lang. Kaya nagka-practice-practice po ako pag-uwi ko, sampalin nyo ako yung malakas. Awa po ng Diyos, ganito lang po pag tanggap na po lahat. Nung una, ano, sobrang kaiisip ko, hindi ako nakalakad ng kalating taon na medyo na ano na praning praning na ako kasi para na pagini pang ko si mother eh kasi alam ko po kulang yun sorry sa lahat ng nagawa ko sa inyo kasi alam ko ano po yun lai kung dinala sa lina ma ano makuha po niyo ako patawarin eh. Okay na sapat na po sa akin yung makuha niyo ako mapatawad kahit ano na walang po nang hindi ko pakaramdam ko. Mapatawad niyo po ako. Pahingin ako tignan din ang proseso. Hindi ko nga naasahan din. Sabi ko hindi ko rin alam. Pag nakita nila kung ano magiging reaction ko. Pero may nagpita na kita. Sana na hindi nila ako. Siyempre masakit pa rin. Diba ilang kahit ilang taon. Tapos sana, ibuhin nga rin na siya po siya mga sana dito para makalangin ka na rin ako. Kahit pinatawad na kita na ako mo pa rin na may yung consequence mo, yun na nga ako. Mali, hindi ako po, hindi naman po kung hindi na palayain niyo ako. Kasi kahit paano po, naging masaya na rin po ako ngayon dito. Tanggap ko na po eh. Tanggap na, na po. Tanggap na talaga. Yun lang naman daw talaga kailangan kong gawin, tagapin ko kung nasaan ako at ipagsagaan ko ano yung meron. Oo, tagapin ko kasi ang lahat na nagawa. Pero ngayon, yung pinatawad ako, tapos ang patawarin ko yung sarili mo. Tapos dapat magaroon ka na ako at hindi sa pinatawad ko ng Diyos. Miss Cherry Pie Pikachu's decision to forgive the person who killed her mother is one of the most admirable acts that we get to see from a victim's child. It takes a lot for a person to forgive, especially with what Zenaida Sison's family had to go through to cope with the gruesome nature of her fate at the hands of Michael Flores. Before we end, we would like to greet all moms out there with a belated Happy Mother's Day. May we constantly remind our mothers how we love and appreciate them. Thank you for listening and stay safe, everyone. For further updates, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at PH Murder Stories. And subscribe to our YouTube channel PH Murder Stories. If you have case suggestions, please go to our website at phmurderstories.com and fill out the request form at File Your Blotter. Did you like this episode? Give us a rating on Apple Podcasts, or if you're listening on other platforms, kindly send us a review on our Facebook page or send us a tweet. You can also share our podcast to your Instagram and Facebook stories through Spotify. We're also inviting you to join our Facebook group, PH Murder Stories The Verdict, and participate in our discourse about true crime, both local and international. This group is a safe space for true crime and mystery fans like us who want to engage in thorough discussions about the subject. To all our listeners, we hope you could support us on Patreon. If you're fond of online shopping, you can also help our team earn a small commission by clicking our Lazada and Shopee affiliate links found in the description. Any amount you contribute will enormously help support our team to produce more quality content. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia the hosts of the program or other programs of the network. 
Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.